Welcome back. The 2008 U.S. presidential elections made history beyond the victory of the first African-American president, Barack Obama. It was with a collective dropping of jaws with a few snickers in between that the world watched as CNN introduced the first ever hologram interview on TV, not just once, but twice. Here in the Philippines, we may not be as advanced, but we're not too far behind either. Much like in the U.S. presidential elections of 2008, Philippine broadcast news networks pulled out all the stops, blew all their bells and whistles to be first while having as much gloss on air as possible. Will, thanks very much for being with us. And it feels good being here in Chicago. Blame it on CNN, which introduced TV's first ever hologram interview with Will yeah, I Am. Like, like exactly the holograms like in, uh, were no easy Trek, feat. I mean. They called for about 40 fixed high-definition cameras positioned in a semicircle around the interviewee, who is placed in a green room. But, uh, about a dozen years I've been trying to do it, and, and I've basically been a crazy mad scientist trying to get it done. It was really complicated technologically. The sound was really complicated. At live, mula sa Ilo, While Ilo that kind of technology Jennifer was Garcia. not yet available Jennifer in the Philippines, ABS-CBN News edged out competition with augmented reality and virtual presence. What uh, we did uh, here uh, in the last elections in ABS, uh, we used this technology called real set. And using this technology, as you can see uh, on our background, there are some graphics that you can bring into the studio. Actually, the, uh, we have a video layer in the background, and then we insert the graphics from the 3D authoring softwares. Those graphics becomes the integral part of the studio, and while you're moving the camera, your graphics are still attached uh, to a fixed position in the studio. Because of the technology, they are the technology that we are using for uh, creating these 3D graphics, when they go into the studio, they actually looks like they are matching this perspective of the studio. So they look like as if they are the real objects inside. It becomes more interactive when the objects are itself in the studio rather than keeping a full frame graphics and not showing the anchor. They can react and interact to the graphics which are coming in. ORAD, the firm behind the technology used by ABS-CBN in the recent May national elections, is also capable of recreating virtual studios. Augmented reality can do wonders up to some, with some limitations. Uh, if we are, but if we go to virtual studio, that's actually an, a, a much more uh, higher level implementation of the same thing, like having uh, virtual background altogether. The augmented reality and virtual studio are only separated by a system called green room with a rec uh, pattern recognition system and the camera tracked by two other cameras in the st uh, studio. Whereas the augmented reality can actually bring your graphics to the studio with a real set. So this is a cheaper solution but still quite effective in providing you graphics for uh, news and of course, there was also the reliable touch screen, which helped filter in comments from various social media networks and boto patrollers. So what's next for news now that technology has evolved so much so that actual sets may no longer be required nor even guests right there with the anchor? Television evolves and how we do things evolves. And at some point, maybe it's five years or ten years or twenty years down the road, I think there's going to be a way that television does interviews like this uh, because it allows for a much more intimate possibility for a remote interview. Okay, I'm not a hologram, I'm really here. Well, these days, visual effects are no longer the exclusive domain of movie studios and broadcast networks. The wide availability of graphics programs means anyone who has the time and the determination can also take a stab at special effects. Joining us now to tell us how you too can manipulate pixels for a living are 3D artist Jacqueline Vicente and Hans Christian Caparoso, a CG artist, computer graphics artist, and visual effects director. Jacqueline and Hans, thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you very much.
Well, you two young uns uh, look like you just graduated from school or... <laughs> Uh, well, did you take up uh, fine arts or anything like that to, uh, to, to, to prepare? My course is actually IT. I graduated IT, but uh, I learned my skills through work. All so, right. so get training on the job. Um, yeah. Same thing for you, no, Jacqueline? I'm a fine arts graduate. Fine arts. So did they use computers already at the time um, to, to teach you? Well, yeah, we have a subject. A subject. Okay, well, you know, most people think that uh, news doesn't need to, you know, to be uh, mm -hmm. enhanced all the more by a lot of fancy graphics, but it does help somehow, makes it more interesting to look at. Mm. But in your line of work, uh, you do CG for movies. Movies and TV series. TV like, series. Um, TV series for a kid show, like um, Japanese shows. Mm. Mm. Sentai. Mm, Sentai. It's called Sentai. In the, in the, Japan. Sentai, not hentai. No, no, no. no, not no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to make, you know, make it clear. But <laughs> so if, if you can, if you can apply what you do for films, uh, what could you make for TV news, for example? Mm, we could make, uh, we could enhance the graphics, like the one you just presented, the augmented reality. We can mm. enhance that more, mm. like the quality, the 3D, and the effects. Mm when showing something or someone in the screen. Yeah. We can enhance the interface. I think they, the, 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 the viewers actually like to see all these swirling numbers mm. and words. It's something that moves yes. uh, on the screen. Appealing. It's visually appealing. But uh, how much work goes into producing stuff like that? I mean, you, you draw it, I guess, on the computer, but it takes time before you can see the actual product, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm, it actually takes time to create something that intricate mm -hmm. uh, uh, one, expa one example is that um, you're showing some of your work I think on the screen right oh, yes <laughs> it looks like an exploded view of a Jeep <laughs> yes those are uh, 3d model that are used in games oh, okay yes. Yes. because uh, before we do game assets for outsourcing or US based companies or Japanese based companies mm -hmm. Like, for example, what is this? Train connector. This is the train uh, that we made for a movie. Okay. So I made the train connector that will explode eventually. <laughs> ah, okay, so it's an action movie. And, and did this come out too in a movie? I know, uh, that's just my hobby. Personal work. <laughs> it's, I just did it's, that. It's your hobby? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was wondering whether or not uh, this came out in robots or something. <laughs> um, well. So, so a lot of, um, not a lot of animation, of course, uh, goes into news, except I've seen some Taiwan companies, I think, try mm. to recreate events, uh, mm. just like the bus hostage-taking incident with, uh, with animation. YouTube. Did you see that? Yes, yes. Yeah. I saw that in YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Do you think that that's somehow also a technique that news should use, recreating things digitally? I think um, it should help report, uh, clear some things, like... Mm. When a newscaster explains something, an event or something, yeah. um, some people uh, can't hear or can't clearly read something. Okay. So it has to be visual. Yes, so mm -hmm. it has to be visual. So yeah. it really helps to deliver news. Yeah. If you have something uh, you can mold or you can animate mm -hmm. so that uh, the people can see that and understand automatically what happened. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, everybody is talking about the shift from conventional LCD monitors, uh, high-definition LCDs, to 3D mm. monitors. I guess this is where Jacqueline now comes in. Mm. Would 3D uh, newscasts make any difference? I mean, make any sense? For example, if you apply your 3D uh, rendering skills, I mean, what, how would you apply it to news? Well, um to news. <laughs> would, would, would there be any objects that would look better in 3D uh, if you had a 3D monitor? It's uh, 3D uh, is all about realism. Mm. Uh, it's all about uh, showing something very real but uh, not quite that real mm -hmm. if in, my, in my perspective. Let's say for example Pick a certain news story that you've watched 
recently that you might want to show in 3D or draw in 3D? Drawing? Uh, actually, mm. I haven't watched TV for a long time. Yes, uh, Jacqueline, I hope you've not <laughs> been living in the basement. <laughs> Yeah, you haven't been watching TV? Well, too busy with work, I suppose. Oh, uh, yes. Well, let's say, for example, some story, a new story that you heard about. If there were no video, mm. for example, then you wanted to recreate it for, uh, for TV. Probably the uh, latest incident, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hostage taking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if there weren't any videos, um, we would recreate the, the bus. The bus. And then the how... Mm, how we would shoot it, then mm. how the hostage taking took place. Mm -hmm. Based from the opinions and the comments of the victims. Mm. And would that we take could time to, to, to draw in 3D? Actually, uh, the asset would probably take some time, but mm. not very long. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just probably make um, uh, animatics for it. Mm. Animatics. Yes. Animatics. Okay, what is animatics? Animatics is basically the uh, bare animation. Bare animation. Um, it's not the, final. the simplest animation. Like the outline can of do. an animation. Yes, yes, like if a person is shown to be walking, yeah. then you animate a person like mm. that. Mm. You Does it have to be real human like, fluid uh, movement? Uh, no, no. I, I, I actually see how they do it uh, abroad where they have somebody wear a suit mm. where there are oh, yes. sensors and they take video of that person with the sensors and mm. motion, uh, digitize it. Motion, yeah. motion capture. Motion capture. Yes. Do we have that here? Uh, we currently use that in some shows mm -hmm. here in the Philippines Ooh, okay. because. Uh, not a lot of company offer that service <laughs> ah, <laughs> because okay. it's very expensive. expensive. The equipment used to do motion capture is mm. very expensive. Now, just a quick look at some of the... Uh, uh, let's bring that back, uh, some of those images. Um, I think you were showing some uh, buildings. Yeah, well, what are those things? Uh, those are used for game trailers. Game trailers. Mm. Did, you, did you do that? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is a, an example of 3D modeling. Yes. Oh, yes. How long did it take you to do all of that? Uh, it took me two to three weeks, um, including revisions yeah. mm -hmm. and changing of colors and stuff. Two to wow! Two so to you really don't have time to watch news. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. work is very work. Yeah, work is your life. Well, yes. I can life. <laughs> empathize with that. Well, it's interesting, of course, uh, to see how uh, the uh, evolution of broadcast technology might just make 3D and CG mm. uh, a common part of uh, news uh, broadcasting. So mm. we look forward to working uh, with Jacqueline and Hans. Maybe in one of these days, Future Perfect just might be in 3D. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> thank you very much uh, to Jacqueline and Hans for coming to the show. Uh, thank, thank you so very much. <laughs> well, you can look for more of Hans and Jackie's works on www.terra-byte.com. Dot com dot dot JP. JP. So it's a Japanese yes, sir. based it's a website. Japanese based website. Okay. And that will do it for the show. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tony Velasquez. Join me again next time when we again examine the present and look ahead to the future perfect of Philippine tech.